Hey, it's your Monday Read Aloud by Mr. Shulman. So I'm gonna turn this camera around and we're gonna get started. Okay. So here we go, The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind by William Kamkwamba and Brian Mueller. And it is a young reader's edition of the New York Times bestseller, A True Story of Survival Against the Odds. See the cool picture there. And of course, it's a Netflix film, so catch it on Netflix. All right, let's turn this book around and see what it's about. A life-changing plan. When William Kamkwamba was a young teen, a terrible famine, that's hunger, struck his tiny village in Malawi, Africa. The loss of crops left his family with nothing to eat or sell. Without money, William was forced to drop out of school. Fortunately, William found hope in the village library. There, he came up with an idea that would change the lives of the people around him. He would build a windmill made from junkyard scraps. William's amazing creation would bring electricity to his home. It would help his family pump the water they needed to farm the land, and it would turn this ordinary African teenager into a hero known all around the world as the boy who harnessed the wind. Let's all make our wind sound. Ready? Pretty cool. All right. We're going to turn this page. The boy who harnessed the wind. And it's to my family, WK. Here is the table of contents. All these cool chapters. And we'll start... Oops, that's chapter nine. Here is chapter one. Oh, with the prologue first. That comes first. And then chapter one, when magic ruled the world. All right, now I actually know how to turn the pages. Look at this map. That's awesome. There's Malawi. There's the South Atlantic Ocean on the west side and the Indian Ocean over here on the east side. Got the Mediterranean Sea. Got little houses or huts here. Palm trees. What's that? That says Wimbe and Lilongwe. There's a cute little boat. And that's the continent of Africa. Up oh, Red Sea up there. Okay. The boy who harnessed the wind. Prologue. So this part happens at the beginning before the story actually starts. Let's take a look. The machine was ready. After so many months of preparation, the work was finally complete. The motor and blades were bolted and secured. The chain was taut. That means tight and heavy with grease. And the tower stood steady on its legs. The muscles in my back and arms had grown as hard as green fruit from all the pulling and lifting. And although I'd barely slept the night before, I'd never felt so awake. My invention was complete. It appeared exactly as I'd seen it in my dreams. News of my work had spread far and wide, and now people began to arrive. The traders in the market had watched it rise from a distance, and they closed up their shops while the truck drivers left their vehicles on the, hold on, the suspense is killing me, road. They'd crossed the valley toward my home, and now they gathered under the machine, looking up in wonder. I recognized their faces. These same men had teased me from the beginning, and still they whispered, even laughed. Ha, ha, ha. Let them, I thought. It was time. I pulled myself onto the tower's first rung and began to climb. The soft wood groaned under my weight as I reached the top, where I stood level with my creation. Its steel bones were welded and bent, and its plastic arms were blackened from fire. I admired its other pieces, the bottle cap washers, rusted tractor parts, and the old bicycle frame. Each one told its own story of discovery. Each piece had been lost and then found in a time of fear and hunger and pain. Together now, we were all being reborn. In one hand, I clutched a small reed that held a tiny light bulb. I now connected it to a pair of wires that dangled from the machine, then prepared for the final step. Down below, the crowd cackled like hens. 
Quiet, everyone, someone said. Let's see how crazy this boy really is. Just then, a strong gust of wind whistled through the rungs and pushed me into the tower. Reaching over, I unlocked the machine's spinning wheel and watched it begin to turn. Slowly at first, then faster and faster, until the whole tower rocked back and forth. My knees turned to jelly, but I held on. I pleaded in silence, don't let me down. Then I gripped the reed and wires and waited for the miracle of electricity. Finally it came, a tiny flicker in my palm, and then a magnificent glow. The crowd gasped, and the children pushed for a better look. It's true, someone said. Yes, said another. The boy has done it. He has made electric wind.